Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. So this is class two on how to repair any computers. Uh, on the first video, I just did a brief introduction on the equipment that you need or the one I have here, which has been working really good for me. I didn't show complete because otherwise the video would have been really, really long. So today, um, again, I wanna make sure that you guys understand that that was just an introduction. I'm not going to go in depth on the first classes because otherwise I will just, you know, uh, make it seem too hard and it's not like that. So I'm going to start again showing you with repetition how to get, you know, the pinouts for the computer, how to activate a computer. Today I got another computer here. This is a 4F150. Uh, it's a 2003 4F150 Harley Davidson 5.4 supercharged computer. So this computer, uh, we replaced it because it was having a long crank in and then the car runs. So for me here, it's perfect. It's going to work really good for the testing that we need to do. And um, what I'm again going to show today is how to connect to this computer, how to do an activation on this case on the air temperature sensor, which is also the same and applies the same for a coolant temperature, cylinder head uh, temperature, they're all thermistors. So I will show you uh, how to connect to that. A little bit on the uh, board on following again, the path and get the, uh, you know, the resistors. What is a ser uh, um, resistor in series? What is a resistor in parallel? What is the same thing, you know, when you have the capacitors, the different types of uh, diodes. And we will move along on the classes to make sure that you guys feel comfortable and you can become successful in repair uh, circuit boards too. Not just in automotive and, and anything because what are we doing in here pretty much applies to anything. If you go into a laptop, the laptop might have different uh, uh, voltage rails but they also work with three, three and a half, five volts. They have, you know, a, a charger. Then, then they don't work when it, with, with a 110. So they have a charger and that charger is also a transformer. So it gives their, you know, the voltage to that. So, but that's a separate, a separate thing. So I have some new um, setup for us uh, being able, or we will be able, to, or you will be able to see a lot better this time. But so we will proceed with the video right now, starting the class. All right, so the first thing that I wanted to show is obviously the, the pinouts, how I start. Let's say, you know, the first thing that I do, I, don't, I know nothing about these computers. So let me run the, the screen recorder on the laptop. So. You will see a little bit in here, but I'm going to put the full screen. So that's going to be a better approach. So I already have selected a 2003 4F150, blah, blah, blah. And it's the whole thing that we need to. And then we will go over to diagrams. And I always, I got to emphasize that, uh, always make sure that even if you, like in this case, I'm using the not OEM, which because our colored wire diagrams are a lot easier for me to work on. But I always go, especially when I see a little bit of a changes and double check the, the actual layout and pinout with the OEM. It takes a little longer, but it's the way, I mean, you have to do it like that. So today I'm using um, old data. I'm doing a zoom right here, so I'm going to go a little quicker because well, I am now a little familiar with it. For uh, uses the ground, they call the power ground. Don't ask me why. So I'm going to first select the grounds and the stuff that I know that I have on this side. This computer uses uh, just one connector with 104 pins or uses different pins or uh, pinouts on, on the computers as far as 104, 121, 150 something. Uh, make sure that it's not it's going to stop recording. <laughs> I don't know why that went. Make sure this is now, it did stop recording. Um, 
sorry for that that was a gopro the turn on i mean the turn off i am also going to select the data link connectors because with this computer we can communicate with the scanner and that's one new thing that i want to show you guys is very specific for each manufacturer like i will show you the connections that i have in here this computer uses data link uh, minus and positive that's what they call and it's on the computer pin 15 and 16 on the dlc is pin 10 that goes to pin 15 on the computer and then pin 2 goes to pin 16. i'm going to mark everything in here i also going to mark for further re uh, reference we're not going to use it today the um crankshaft sensors or crankshaft there's only one crankshaft is uh four actually calls these uh which i thought it was just a an inductive uh sensor and they call it a magnetic transducer i'll show that information a little bit farther on the video but let's proceed with what we're doing i think that's all we need in there i have already a note of um all the the stuff that I need to mark. Hopefully you guys can see it uh, again. This is what you need to do to make sure that you're not missing something. Make your, you know, do your homework. Go to the wire diagrams. I kind of like put a uh, myself. I do a drawing. This connector is 104, and it goes. This is like facing the the, the computer. This is the computer connector, not the harness side. So it goes from 1 to 13 from 14 to 26 from 27 to 39 from 40 to 52 and then so on 53 65 66 78 79 91 92 and 108 so that's i'm sorry 104. i also did my notes in here the powers are 55 71 and 97 the grounds 351 I mark 77 because I'll show you, it shows us as, as a ground and it's not because that makes a problem on the car. I mean, on the computer and not even talk. And that's, so th it's an error in here. And um, on the original side, it doesn't even show. So 103 and then case uh, ground, which is 25. I also put, you know, the DLC, um, the pins that we need, which I already discussed. Um, I have some notes in here for further classes. So we're just going to use today in the EAT, uh, Intake Air Temperature Sensor, which is pin 38. All right, so going over to the uh, diagrams in here. Going to mark, and that's what I like uh, uh, all data because it does makes the whole layout uh, B mark. So this is 77, which it shows us uh, as a ground, and it's not. And we said we need 38. I didn't think I marked 38, but I will do it in a second. We got also the sensor return, which I use, which is important. I mean, this is com this computer is really easy to read. I mean, everything is laid out in here. Sometimes you're gonna need to go, which I mean, there is some diagrams that doesn't show all this information on the connectors, and you'll see uh, farther down the road when we start doing more and more tests uh, testing. That is not as simple as this one. I'm using very easy computers on the first classes, so we don't, you know, get lost. So let me mark. Uh, the EAT, which is here. And this one shows two EATs. I use the 38, which is EAT um, 2. Remember, this is a V8 engine, but as far as I remember on my mind, it only uses one. Um, one. All right, so in all data, I can hide the wires, which is nice because now you don't see the whole um the whole thing you just focus on on the wires that you are now selecting and i'll show that that would be very nice on the screen My, yep sorry for that 
All right, so we pretty much got everything. This is how I do it in here. But one other thing that I want to show on um, this is Identifix. I use both so I don't have to close what I have on the other one. But so on Identifix, I was uh, using the OEM um, wire diagrams, which is good too. It's, you know, as you can see, it just show it's like 13, 14 pages. So they're black and white, uh, it's a lot harder to, to understand, but I always always check, make sure everything is fine. So, and this is the uh, air temperature sensor and the, and the OEM it shows only, oh no, I'm sorry, this is actually the crankshaft position sensor or the camshaft that I was looking at too. But so these are the OEM hard, uh, wire diagrams. Let me go over to the bookmarks because I wanted to show you the pinouts okay sorry that's something else these are actually a description on the um, inputs and output for the computer so i'm going to show you what it says just briefly what it says on the crankshaft just scrolling down to it uh, right here so and as chosen here, the crunch position sensor is a magnetic transducer mounted on the engine blocks adjacent to a pulse wheel located on the crankshaft. Again, it's a magnetic transducer. That's a, a very uh, different term. And that's how they call it for me. That was, a, you know, an inductive sensor. It's only a two wires and it produces an AC signals. The circuit three on the computer shows different. So it is something that I, that's what I didn't want it to go that way with you guys. I don't want to confuse you. I want to show you, and that's the way it has to be. We have to go from easy to more advanced and more advanced as, as we go, right? So, okay, so those are the explanations of input and outputs. And again, that's how I do my homework. Uh, let me see what else I got here. I think uh, these are the, yes. So in here, and uh, you can see the connector, which is again, it's 100 and look, you're gonna see how blurry is that. But yeah, it's 104 pin. And that's again, the computer view, not the harness view. And I can go, if you don't have, again, the layout on the uh, wire diagram that shows you know what each pin is, you can always come here and this will tell you. Like in here, you know, it says PCM PIM, uh, pin and it says you know CK, uh, CKP is pin 21. It shows me that the EAT2, which is the one we're using, is a 38 is a pin 38 and it gives me values on key on engine off. Oh, sorry, key on engine, yeah, engine off, hot idle at 30 miles an hour and 35 miles an hour. So, which is very important and very good information. And that's how you need to, you know, proceed with, you know, the values of the sensors. What am I expecting to have just with a, you know, computer connected or not, right? All right, so that's also how you determine um, what the pins on the computers are if you don't have that information available on the wire diagrams. Let me see what else I have here, because I was trying to put as much as together to show you and then proceed with the class, which I hope is not going to be as long as the first one. I wanted to make, you know, shorter videos. It's not as, as, as exhausting for you guys to watch and not as exhausting for me to do and and uh, edit because just to prepare for this class is, is very, is, you know, it's very time consuming, which I don't mind. I like this. I want to share you as much as I know and let's proceed from there. So, um, yeah. That will be what we need from here. We can put this computer away for now. And let me stop the video because that's all I'm going to need for now with this one. Um, I also wanted to I prepare some uh, reading for me and uh, hearing for you guys. As far as the process that goes or the way the computers handles information, which is, you know, a, a voltage, and then it processes all the way down to the microprocessors, and then, you know, to use it as actuation for, you know, injectors, coils, etc. Um, 
it's it's a whole process that goes through that we need to know to make sure that we understand um, how to um, test each of those systems. So the first thing that we have on, I'm going to start with uh, sensors and so on. So we're going to go with the sensors, it changes a magnitude, which is um, a voltage, you know, and, and, and it changes into a signal. And then we have a circuit that prepares that signal and it goes uh, along with um, resistors, capacitors, and diodes um, that prepares that signal that can most of the time, and especially on these floors and all vehicles, you know, this is a 2003, it goes from an anal anal analog uh, type of signal, which can be, you know, a sine wave or even, you know, a five volts or three volts or whatever that computer or sorry, that sensor produces, but it's still considered analog. Why is it considered analog? Because it's not a pure five volts and the, mic, uh, the microprocessors internals on the computer cannot take more more than actually 400 plus or minus uh, bol uh, volts and some of the uh, uh, you know inputs and we will see that along so but so we had that as um, the the circuit that prepares the signal and then after that uh, sorry and this uh, circuit that prepares the signal then brings that analog uh, signal to the converter from analog to digital, which as the name says, it changes that signal from analog to digital and then sends it over to the microprocessor. Some of the microprocessors are built separately and they don't have, you know, um, diodes and stuff like that internally. Some have that all that circuitry and everything that we just that I just spoke about internally in the microprocessor. So we will see with some of the computers like Toyota and Nissan's, they do have most of those, uh, let's say components. So those are the stages, right? Uh, they are externally. These four uses everything internally. They only have like the filtering part uh, external, which is you know capacitors and and resistors, we see some of the um, uh, dials in here, just a few are outside, but most of the stages are built already into the microprocessor, which is also EEPROM, um, flash memory and so on. Uh, not on this one, like those last two, but yeah, the, the newest the computer, the less of those stages you will see outside. Uh, so that was kind of like, a, well, I also have the, we have three stages, which is the filtering, the regulation. Filter, as the name says, it filters the frequency. So we don't have any noises coming from any other things like, you know, uh, a radio, uh, ignition coil that is leaking. So they got as much as possible filtering inside the computer so that signal can reach the microprocessor and it can be interpreted as correct and not make the car, you know, raise the RPM when it's not supposed to and so on, right? Then we have the, you know, the voltage regulation, as the name says. Uh, there is diodes internally, especially the thinner diodes. They are built into the uh, computer that the thinner diode has a very unique um, capability or I'm not even know how to say that, but it's very unique because it's, it's mounted in reverse like a regular diode, you have the uh, cathode and the, anode, and the anode. And I was also explaining that in here. Um, usually, you know, the um, side that has a line, that's the ca cathode, and the other one is the anode. So if you test uh, a diode, you will see that if you test it with a regular voltmeter, you will have, you know, a 0.7 of a drop through the diode. Some of the MOSFET has built in, they have built in uh, diodes inside and that's why you have the voltage drop. And that's what, why the formula shows that also as well. But then, well, coming back to here, I wanna, you know, again, confuse you with deeper information. So we have the, the signal preparation and then, which is, you know, from sine to a square wave. So this is just a little brief information that I have for you guys in here. 
Um, coming back to what we have today, um, so we saw the pinout. I want also to explain how I do my, I have one in here, handy. I always forget that to the last time, I mean, to the last minute. You can get this type of connectors. Let me get a little closer to the camera. You guys can see that. I got this one. Hopefully you guys can see it well, yeah. I got this one from Amazon. I will post the link. What I like about this one is that you can remove this plastic tab and then release each pin and put it anywhere you want. You don't want to have a fix a fixed one because otherwise you're going to be hand, you know handing a whole bunch of wires that you don't really need every for every uh, application right so i will put that in. this one is actually from michigan motorsports and i will put that uh and it's a defeats the dodge and jeep yeah that's what i i got it because it has this type of um a handle thing but so uh again on on these uh computer for the scanner, I have connector. I'm using the the SUS from Snap, which is you know a wireless uh, BCI. Uh, I use you know pins on the DLC. That's the DLC connector, right? The pin 16. It's just power. It, it will power the scanner module. And then we have pin five, a uh, four and five, which is you know sensor ground and ground, which it will just connect to all the grounds that I got. It goes shared with the computer and everything onto my uh, regulated uh, power supply. Then we have pins two and ten that will go into pin fifteen and sixteen to the computer. And that is, yep, that's pretty much what we need from the DLC to communicate with this computer. So I'm going to run the scanner as I am starting to do this. So I'll show you in a second all the connections that we have in there. Let me bring this down. Yep. So I'm going to, the scanner module is already on, the computer is on as well. So I'm going to ID the vehicle. So I got to actually, since I already ID the vehicle, I can use the vehicle history and activate that car. Now it says, you know, 2003 Ford F-150. Now the scanner is going to try, you know, to connect. That is whatever it takes. It's actually, it was really quick. And then we're going to go to engine and power train. That's the only computer we have connected to the network, right? It's an automatic transmission with AC. And we're going to go over to data display. It just gives some little warnings that I don't know, not even what they do that. We go to drivability. You can select pretty much any of those sub menus, but I use drivability because it's the one it has. I mean, the few pieces that we're going to use for this, right? And I'm going to custom select or deselect first. And then uh, I'm going to use again, it's the AT82. Sorry, IAT2 and the voltage for that. I'm going to use the TPS, uh, yeah, throttle position sensor. You can see they will have voltage. Um, let me see what else. Something that shows voltage because it's the only thing we will be having in here. I'm not sure if we, let's, you know, I haven't even checked for the autos and then battery voltage. We can see a list view. Come on, come on. What happened? Don't let me down when I'm recording a video, please. Something happened, let's do it again. Yeah, everything is on. Yeah, everything is on in here, so again, Custom select, these select all because otherwise it takes forever. Don't know. Yeah, that's this view. Okay, now I did it. You will see now that it's like, oh, we got temperature. Why we got temperature? All right, so 
that's another thing that I wanted to show here. So I'm going to move the uh, microscope a little bit of the way. Sorry, but you're going to maybe the computer actually a little bit of the way. And then I can put that in here. So this is a part of a, an Arduino setup. Let me move it so we can see it both. That is a potentiometer. So with this potentio uh, potentiometer in here, hopefully you guys can see well in there too. Um, all, all we need is uh, two of the legs. The potentiometer has, you know, uh, ground and power and a signal, like a, a throttle position sensor and so on. You, this one has a dial. But so we use the center one in one of the sides. You have to check it with the uh, bolt meter. Just, you know, you can connect the three wires and then just connect one to ground and the other one, or, you know, to the one side of the of the multimeter and the other side of the multimeter uh, reading uh, resistance ohms and see if you move the dial and it moves. If it stays steady, it's the other leg. You always, the center one you always gonna use is either one of the sides, no color on this case, so you just gotta, you know, look for it. And uh, it looks like I'm using one and two, I think. But so, you will be able to see very good on the scanner. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, get my fingers out of the way, just move that. And as you can see, the temperature is dropping by me dialing. And if I go the other way, I can raise the temperature all the way up to whatever the maximum is in there, which I don't want to go because I don't want to disturb the computer too much. But you can see, you know, I can do a graphic in there. Uh, we can also see, well, actually, yeah. Yeah, the total the total uh, position is in zero because it's it's not connected. But we have the battery voltage in 12.9, and so this is how you can uh, use the Arduino boards like this. Uh, this is called the fretboard. I also was going to show where to get this one, but I mean, just look for an Arduino po uh, potenti uh, potentiometer, and you will be able to find this online. Pretty easy and simple. So I also wanted to show, and uh, with the, um, let me put this on the, on the microscope. Let me find a pin that we have. Yeah, it's right here. So pin 38. Now we're going to use the oscilloscope, which I am using now my four channel oscilloscope. Something happened with the, with the other one. That one I have from, uh, I got it from eBay. Uh, it's a cheap one. This I got it brand new. It's also a very good one. It's a 200 megahertz. The same uh, 2.5 giga samples per second, but this is a 190, 204. It's a four channel oscilloscope. It does have also a bolt meter. You use the same leads that the scope has. That one is actually like a regular bolt meter. It has, you know, diode and continuity. This one it has just very minimum. Uh, has a, has no continuity test on that. So if that one ended up being bad, I'm, I might probably just get one of my uh, meters in here. I got the bench uh, multimeter as well in there. But so coming back to here, so I got, you know, the connections to 38. That's where the, where this potentiometer is connected and the red wire is going inside there. So if I move that in here, we will see also on the signal right here on the multi uh sorry on my oscilloscope how that is changing i can also if i release a pin on the ground that went to five volts and that goes to zero but you can see that also it shows in the scanner what the voltage is on the on on that pin too right so if you have a uh, high, um, yeah, high voltage on a signal, especially on a thermistor, this computer is supplying that five volts and sending it over through a thermistor to, which is a, you know, a variable resistor pretty much to change that, uh, that uh, resistance.
and then we'll change the voltage. So I'm connecting it back there. We are back into 120 something uh, degrees. I have also prepared a little bit of information. This is from a geo tracker. This is for further classes, so it's in Spanish. So whoever speaks Spanish, please don't don't say too much. <laughs> so what we pretty much will see on any of these, uh, the lighting here is not the best, but I try to work with this as much as possible. So this is the coolant sensor or air temperature sensor, and this is the the symbol for it. That's a symbol for the ground. So a uh, battery of resistor at the thermistor is the same as a resistor symbol with an arrow through it. This one on the geo tracker will go to pin two, and this card will be to pin 38. And then it goes through a series of, like in this case first, we have the fiber reference. Going through a resistor, this is a 222. The resistor 22, and when you have three numbers, is first digit, second digit, number of zeros. So this one will be, 2200 ohms then it has you know the signal will go and it's protected by this resistor in case it's shorted to, to ground to not damage the fiber reference so i will drop in here but it will never change the fibers on this side that's the reason of those resistors in series then we have another resistor there is in parallel this resistor is a 393 so again First digit, second digit, amount of zero, so it's 39,000 ohms. And this one is in parallel to ground. This is, in case it's a high spike, this will take whatever is in here and drop it to um, ground. Then we have another resistor in series, which is a 472, which is, you know, in this case, 4,700 4, ohms. Then we have a dial. This is the way a geo tracker uses. Sorry if I'm off the camera. So this is the symbol for dial. This is a double diode actually. So it looks like a, a, a MOSFET or a transistor, but this is actually a double diode. And I will explain that later on, on, on that video, why it's set up like that and, why it's, and how it works. And then this system uses a capacitor to ground. This is for filtering and then at the end, the microprocessors. So this is kind of like what we have on that computer, just a little different. And I wanted to show it like this because uh, for uh, uses like very d uh, distinctive uh, process to analyze the data and information, which I don't want to confuse um, you guys uh, starting you know, with, with these first classes. Today, my main goal on this class was connections. I want to reinforce how to get the pinouts, how to uh, use yourself a notepad, write, you know, write down the pinouts, and then connect those leads onto the computer and talk to the scanner. Now I can turn uh, the scanner off. We don't need this no more. Because I want to go over to the back of the computer let me one second, guys, to stop all this. And I can exit here. I hope I was recording, because otherwise that will be bad. I don't know why that was not on. OK, we'll see that later. Hopefully it work. Otherwise, we might miss a little bit. So I can turn my regulator power off as well. Yeah, it's still recording. Perfect. OK, I can stop that now. Perfect. So I turned the uh, power off so we can now take a look of the connections behind. I can disconnect the potentiometer to put it away. And so now I'm going to show you guys in there. We have the GoPro, yeah, all right, so I need my glasses. <laughs> so 
So this is like looking like this. Hopefully you guys can see something. Maybe if I turn that off. Sometimes too much light is not good. All right, so we have actually numbers in here. Hopefully the camera picks up. So 14 to 26 and 1 to 13, which is the first row. That's exactly how I have it in here. So 1 to 13 and so on. And then, you know, I usually made my own leads. I got these ones from Amazon. These ones are round pins. And I use heat shrink to protect the the pins from shorting together. This one will stay uh, steady on the pin in the computer, so no problem. But the back, it can, you know, wiggle, especially by me turning around, uh, which <laughs> I'm on this one is a ground. That will be pin number 25. which is the case, the case round. So again, I did like this and I use um, four millimeter banana adapters on the other side to piggyback. And then I have like five grounds and, and so you can see the connections in here. I don't like to use exposed wires and alligators because that's looking for trouble. I mean, if it's for classes like, like this, and you don't care about the computer, uh, no, not a problem. I've seen other guys do, do that, uh, like me. I gotta, I like to, uh, oops, sorry for that. I like to uh, make myself used to do the same things always. If you do repetition on one way and you keep doing it that way, it's like automatic. It's like your keys. If you leave your keys always in your nice stand right next to you, you can just wake up in the middle of the night without even a light and reach those keys and run, right? So that's what I do it like this. And so these are the other things that I get from, from Amazon. They're just four millimeter banana adapters. And I buy this roll of wire. and I create my own lease. So it's gonna be a, um, a process of teaching you guys uh, with repetition, how to do or how to be successful, how to be quick on doing things and repair these things. But you know, you don't have to buy everything. You can do your own leads. I have leads for everything that I work in here except for, you know, the, the oscilloscope is very specific or the uh, multimeter, but the rest I pretty much do myself. All right, guys, this is the class for today. Pretty easy, pretty simple. On the next class, my goal is to explain you without going into the board yet too deep, what is uh, a diode, what is a resistor, how to test a resistor, how to test a diode, a senior diode, um, the different types of capacitors that we have and let me show one today too we can do that and i can point to it um, well you guys will be looking at them both so we have if i can find where i am okay so this is a, a diode That is a diode, and usually uh, on these ones, that side is the negative, the other side is the positive, and you will see, hopefully I'm saying it right, and I can show you that. Let me power up this one more time, and we can use a scope, because I love this, this is scope for those reasons. It's ready to go instantly, well, if I can untangle the wires. <laughs> All right, the reason I turned the, the computer on again is to show you that, actually I was wrong. Oh, well, am I, that one doesn't have power. It's on, yes. All right, let me look for better the other side which I have the computer yeah 
This side is better. I'm going to give you a little hint. Uh, this is those that is a, a center diode. This is the voltage uh, or the power source for the computer. When you see this one, you can see we have 13 volts in here. Hopefully you guys can see here we got 13 volts right there and then this will be ground. So we got another diode in here. Let's see if this one got power. Yeah, this has 12 volts in here, so that's the power side. So this type of uh, capacitor, when it has the line, that is the power and that is the ground. This is another capacitor. That's, this is an electrolyte. Uh, hopefully I'm saying it correct. So we will have on this side, we have the power and then the side where the line is, is the ground. Let me go on to that side. And we got 0 0.11 volts. So it's the opposite of the other one, right? So we have one where the line is, is the ground, and one with the line where the power is. So again, we have 12.6 volts on the side where the line is. And then we have another type of capacitor, and it's the opposite, right? So just be careful with that, get familiar. The more that you practice, the better you are. And it's not that you cannot make mistakes. I mean, we're human for sure. But how can you test? Uh, I got a question from one of you guys, uh, subscribers to the channel. Can you um, find out where the powers and where the grounds are coming from on a computer? Yes. It's harder it's because what if you don't have a wire diagram? I'm like, well, <laughs> you're trying to work in a computer and you don't have a wire diagram, you, you, you are in serious trouble because you are putting yourself into a really hard situation. But let's say, can you find out where the powers and grounds are? Sure, of course. I mean, like I said, look for the uh, senior diode. And now you know the senior diode is the big side is, is always ground and the other side is, is power. So follow the powers are all pretty much uh, connect together so i can check for continuity the grounds are pretty much internally connected so yes just you know this one we have a, a case ground in here and i can assure you that if i go over to uh let me actually do it i just give you my words but you know i'm the teacher on this side so you have to believe with a lot of stuff that I said, but I like also to show you that what I'm saying is truth. So I will be removing some of these ones and these are just again grounds and that's what I like to use black uh, cables. This is the one for the scanner so we can leave that one on the side. This one is the signal return for the sensors. If I have, uh, done this correctly or you know showing you guys the correct uh, information this case and this will have continuity and hopefully let me get you guys a little closer because I don't have any way to otherwise record that to you and um, probably it's better like right there Let me get a zoom. And this wire is on the way, right? What I was going to do? Check the oh. is that less less on the view? Yes. So you're watching most of the staff through the GoPro. So again, if I put one wire here and I touch the other wire in there, we got continuity. And that's the signal return for the sensor. So signal return and case ground are connected. If I keep going with all the rest of the black stuff, all these are grounds. I can show you that they're the same thing. I mean, six, uh, signal return in that, and we got continuity. Case ground, continuity. So all the grounds are shared. 
do we need to make uh, sure that all the grounds are there when you're doing, you know, uh, computer testing and everything? It's the best. Uh, the, as much as amperage uh, you're or testing and you're doing in the computer, it's better to put all the powers and all the grounds because uh, speci specifically on the grounds are not so bad. As long as you got a, a better or a heavier gauge wire, you can go along with one or two. The power is very important to respect and find the different rails going into the pins because it might be a different rail for, uh, like in this case, we have the transmission and we have the engine computer. So those rails are most likely in the same case, but in different spots. So yes, you can do it. Uh, it's a little harder, but you can do it. All right, guys, uh, again, that's the class for today. Hopefully you guys like the information and I'm going to go further in showing you more on even how to remove a lot of this stuff. And that's why you have things like this. Um, these hat tweezers are awesome. These things are made to make your life as easy as possible. Nope, that's actually good. All you gotta do is press and both sides are getting hit up so you can remove a component that uses like this one, uh, you know, two sides. That makes it easy. The hot air, the hot air station is that one in there. As, as it says, it's a hot air station. And I use these tweezers, you know, you put the hot air station, you use captain tape. The captain tape, what it does, if you are going to remove this, let's say, you know, an IC chip or a microprocessor, you need to put a lot of temperature. Make sure that you remove this clear coating when you're doing that, because otherwise it's gonna make a mess. Alcohol, brush, it makes it easy. And try to cover as much as uh, little components that you have on the side, so you're not in then having to, you know, resolder 50 things. This helps a lot. And then hot air station, I would probably, I usually go on boards like this to remove that like around, you know, 290. I have go up to, you know, sometimes 340 Celsius. This is not Fahrenheit Celsius. Quick. And then I also have a suction one that you just put on it and it sucks in, especially when it's a board like that. Sometimes it's just a smaller uh, A10 pin. I use just a tweezer. But again, I like to keep talking and it's making it longer. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Please don't forget to subscribe, share this information with as much as friends you think there will be benefit, uh, beneficial for them. And I see you next time with class three. We're going deeper and deeper into uh, uh, electronic repair. All right, guys, see you next time.